Jan Flavin is known to be one of the pioneers of minimal art, and he is certainly the most luminous of its representatives. We decided to make a Jan Flavin exhibition that is not only a retrospective. There are many interesting facets one could discuss when talking about Dan Flavin. There is, for example, his choice of his main material. It's the fluorescent light bulb. This is a material that now becomes nearly historical because it has been forbidden in the European Union and in Switzerland. On the other hand, his use of the lamp as a system, of the fluorescent light as a system, is fascinating. Starting 1963, Dan Flavin decided to use nothing else but fluorescent light for all of his light works. Thereby, he restricted himself to a formal language of 10 colors only and lamps of four different sizes. Um, he nevertheless created an incredibly versatile and differentiated oeuvre. One could of course talk about uh, many other aspects, but the focus we chose for our exhibition was his unusual use of titles and especially of dedications. While most of the works of Den Flavin are untitled, as are many other works that belong to the minimal art epoch, Den Flavin however chose to add dedications to many of his works. These dedications could be very personal, so works are dedicated to friends, um, to lovers, to his dog, but these works could also be part of a broader art historical canon. Here behind me we have such an example. These are two works that are dedicated to the Russian avant-garde artist Vladimir Tatlin. These works are called Untitled Monument to Vladimir Tatlin. Why is monument put in brackets? Because Dan Flavin said these are not real monuments, they're fake, they're just made of fluorescent light. However, he was deeply fascinated by this figure. Vladimir Tatlin is an artist who became widely influential in uh, Russia after the 1917 revolution, and he's known to be one of the more utopian avant-garde artists. Dan Flavin was particularly fascinated by his idea of creating a monument for the Russian Revolution. So it is the monument for the Third International. It was never built because his idea was structurally impossible and there was never enough material. But for Flavin, this kind of failed monument represented something more significant and um, larger. There are other dedications that, however, have a different kind of depth. Um, there are dedications that have a more political character. For example, in another gallery you'll find Monument 4 dedicated to those killed in ambush. This is a monument Dan Flavin created for uh, the soldiers who died in the Vietnam War. And dedications like this, they offer a kind of more in-depth view of the context in which Dan Flavin's oeuvre existed. So by choosing the topic of dedications, we could not only create a retrospective including some of his most iconic works, but really include works that are less known to the public that have this specific angle. It was also immensely important to us to connect Dan Flavin to our institutional history, and um, since in 1975, Dan Flavin had an exhibition here in the Kunstmuseum Basel, as well as in the Kunsthalle Basel. And from this uh, time, from this year, we have a beautiful installation, a permanent installation in our courtyard, which Dan Flavin dedicated to Urs Graf. Untitled, in memory of Urs Graf, is one of the very few permanent pieces that exists in Europe. Why Urs Graf? Dan Flavin was fascinated by this Renaissance draftsman and printmaker um, since he was collecting works on paper himself. And he was especially uh, taken and kind of smitten by Graf's most violent and most unexpected drawings of his life as a mercenary. Um, so Dan Flavin decided to create this work in honor of the Renaissance master.